I have a confession to make. I can't stop playing Remnant 2. It's already become one of my favorite games this year, and a lot has changed since Remnant from the Ashes had released. So I decided to gather some worthwhile tips and tricks that I believe everyone should know before heading into the world of Remnant 2. And also, I'm going to try my best to present all these tips with little to no spoilers because discovering them for yourself is what makes this game stand out in many different ways. Let's jump right into it. So after you create your character, you'll be asked to choose your difficulty. Now each difficulty has a way of challenging the player. I glanced over the difficulty options when I first started playing, and truthfully the game describes the difficulties with complete accuracy. I do recommend playing the game on Survivor for your first playthrough as it's still challenging but it offers a more dynamic spread when it comes to surviving and learning enemy attack patterns. However, it's also worth noting that harder difficulties have unique loot that can also be earned only upon completing that difficulty. Just like Remnant from the Ashes, Hardcore Mode opens the door for unique items that are only obtainable in that mode. If you're looking to do a hardcore run, then you can check the box when starting a new character in the main menu. After completing a game in hardcore mode, these special and unique rewards will also be granted across all your characters within the game. This means that your other characters can profit after the loss of your hardcore character. In turn, this opens up more replayability options to you and allows for more of a streamlined approach when creating your next character. But don't worry too much about the rewards as you can earn unique rewards for just completing the game normally and re-rolling into the harder difficulties respectively later on. Also, don't stress about being locked into a specific difficulty. Rerolling your campaign in adventure mode will be commonplace when it comes to Remnant 2, as all the items are scattered beyond multiple playthroughs, so re-experiencing the game on a harder difficulty the second time around will present you with many different possibilities to earn rewards that you didn't get a chance to get before. Okay, so once you've chosen the difficulty and you've completed the tutorial, your first stop in the game will be War 13. War 13 will be your hub. This is where you'll buy mods for your weapons, upgrade your loadout, and be able to buy consumables and other useful tools. My most useful tip to anyone starting out in Remnant would be to explore the entire ward. That includes talking to all the NPCs that offer dialogue options. Some NPCs will open up trade options if you exhaust their dialogue and others will even grant you free items upon doing so. Not to mention having to know where everything you'll need is located is a huge step in the right direction since Remnant 2 doesn't really give you a tour around the ward. Outside of the ward you'll meet a lot of different characters, and each one will present you with different choices depending on their role in your story. So after the tutorial you'll be able to pick a class. Now it's important here not to stress as you'll be able to pick up all the classes shown to you within the ward. Something also worth mentioning is that each class has a set loadout attached to them. That includes a melee weapon, a sidearm, and a primary weapon. But if for any reason you aren't enjoying those weapons, you can always visit Barabbas who is stationed near the shooting range. There he will sell you any of the other classes' weapons for some scrap. It's worth mentioning that all the starting weapons are very good and can be used until the end game, so like I said, don't stress. Something that I love about Remnant 2, that the original Remnant didn't really shine heavily on, is the melee combat. In the first Remnant we got a lot of weapons that didn't really feel all too different, and most of them didn't really play well when it came to being surrounded by enemies. That completely changes within this game. Nearly all weapons are viable for making your class stand out, and the damage output even within boss arenas can make a huge difference for when ammo gets low. Something I learned in many of the deaths I encountered was the use of my dodge mechanic and how easy it was to catch iframes based off of my current roll status. Just like the Souls games, your equipment load will affect your dodge and give you a stamina penalty. This, of course, can be adjusted within your loadout, allowing you to mix and match specific pieces of armor so you can survive enemy encounters much easier. Learning when to dodge will come naturally as you play, but understanding how the penalty affects you is something that you'll have to learn as you apply more armor. Most of what makes the builds in Remnant 2 work best is the trait system. Here you can choose traits from your class's archetype that you've earned and apply them directly into your character. This can also be respec, so don't really worry about making any bad choices. As long as it makes you feel stronger, it's a good choice to invest into your character. Making a character shift from being a tanky support to an all-out damage dealer is what appeals to me most about this game. Prioritizing what abilities will aid you as you progress is what's important, as the game will become increasingly more difficult as your character becomes stronger. Traits can be found in the world's biomes by just exploring, and once you progress through a single biome within the campaign, you can open up Adventure Mode to revisit that world. Adventure Mode can offer different events, bosses, and new items to get, so it's definitely worth going into especially if you feel like the campaign is giving you a hard time. Earning new weapons, rings, amulets, and traits is what makes Adventure Mode such an awesome experience, and being able to reroll your adventure allows you to make different choices as you progress through it, as well as earn completely new rewards. Speaking of rewards, joining a cooperative session not only helps the host progress through their campaign or adventure, but any items will automatically be awarded to the entire party as long as you've earned them together. Playing cooperatively is something that shines incredibly well with Remnant 2. The worlds are vast and require a lot of attention, but having friends and even some strangers to lean on is what makes the experience an even greater one. I definitely had some trouble in the later parts of my campaign, and a couple of really beefy teammates assisted me on some world bosses in picking up a few items I didn't even initially see. 
Remnant 2 is definitely better in co-op play, so don't be afraid to set your game to public mode, as most of the community is willing to help you take down some bosses and look out for loot along the way. Once you make your way outside the ward, the game will start your adventure at one of three random biomes. These worlds harbor a lot of challenging enemies and an abundance of loot to find. What makes Remnant 2 worthwhile to me is how little handholding it actually does. Players will have to use their own intuition to determine if areas are worth taking a trip back to, and almost every time that answer will be yes. Secrets lie dormant everywhere in Remnant 2, sometimes in the corners of the dungeons that you'll explore, and sometimes even right under your nose. Having those moments becomes rewarding to anyone who takes the time to search every nook and cranny, and the rewards become even greater to those who find them. So look at your map often and carefully, as areas are well hidden behind illusionary walls, holdout structures, and many intricate puzzles. Remnant 2 has added a new feature called Mutations to help aid you on your road to becoming a stronger foe to your enemies. When exploring dungeons, there can be some secret encounters that you might find. Upon completing these encounters, you'll earn weapon-specific mutators that can be applied to either your melee or your ranged weapons. This is a complete game changer as it can amplify your character's build and make defeating enemies that much easier. Each of these mutators will grant you a percentage-based buff, and when you fully max them out, you'll be able to earn another stat based on that modifier. Making a build around what you find is your key to succession in Remnant 2. At first, applying what you find might feel somewhat random, but as you find more and more items, you'll see yourself playing to your strengths and identifying where your character's weaknesses lie. Eventually, you'll be able to breeze past encounters because of your power level. If it feels too hard, take into consideration the power level on top of your minimap. This little number represents the current difficulty of your surrounding enemies. It's best to be at the level shown, but if you're a level or two away, you can still manage. Also, something I wish I knew before I began blindly upgrading my arsenal is how your power level is portrayed. Power levels are split between your highest archetype levels and your highest weapons in your inventory, not what you have equipped. So take your time when it comes to upgrading specific weapons, as it can heavily change the difficulty around you as you progress. Death is a part of this game just like any other Souls-like, so it's important to learn from mistakes and capitalize on those moments. So don't get discouraged when you die, whether it be from a boss phase or maybe even a cliffside, learn from every encounter. In fact, death allows you to earn more items to level up your weapons, and even earn a little bit more scrap on the side. Making death become more rare is something that I always strive to make happen whenever I play a Souls-like. I always try to make my character have an offensive and defensive stance whenever I can. And thankfully, right from the start of the game, you can have that choice no matter which class you choose. Visit McCabe in the ward. She is somebody you will regularly visit throughout the entire game, however, when you complete the tutorial, she'll make a mod for you that will basically be free. One I would definitely recommend here is the Healing Shot. This mod allows you to keep your relic uses on reserve for revives or when you really need it. It's worth mentioning that weapon mods are also free to use, and once they are used they can be regenerated solely by using any of your weapons. I find that I almost always use a healing mod in co-op play, because it offers free healing for myself and my team. You can even group heal if you time it right, and those moments on harder difficulties can make a clutch play to keep everyone in the fight. Well I think that's enough to get you started in Remnant 2. If you're looking out constantly for secrets, you can discover unique classes and items that will change your build completely. Leave no stone unturned, and above all else, my biggest tip here is to just have fun. Anyways, I'm going to reroll my campaign and get started on my next adventure. My name is Zen, and I hope to see you again real soon. Good luck out there.